Hello everyone. I'm Sushmita Sarkar from RV College of Engineering. I welcome you all for today's lecture four from module two and power uh, quality. And we are going to see in today's lecture, motor starting SATs. This is nothing new. All of you are already aware about what happens to the motor current whenever you start it on, right? So we see that the voltage sack produced by induction motor because majority industries use induction motor. So we are typically here talking about the induction motors, right? So what we see is that the voltage sack produced by induction motor uh, starting current is one of the main causes of sensitive equipment dropout because in rush current is going to be very high and th that will cause a dip in a voltage and that may further lead to uh, drop out of certain sensitive equipments. So in this particular chapter, we are going to learn certain things. That is, first is motor starting methods. What are the different methods? So I am pretty sure that you are aware about few methods and you have studied in your uh, first year uh, basic electrical science. Uh, but we will see some other methods also in this particular lecture. And then we are going to see estimating the SAC severity during the full voltage starting, how the SAC uh, is, uh, you know, what is the criteria uh, with the help of which we check the, whether the voltage is severe or not. And what are the data required for simulations? Fine, so we have usually seen such kind of dip in the voltage whenever any induction motor starts or any kind of motor starts. Fine, so in the uh, motor starting, what we see that there is something called as undesirable effect. That is nothing but what we are talking so long, that is a drawing of several times of full load current when it starts. So what will happen? This large current will, uh, by flowing through the system impedances, will cause a dip in the voltage. And that may further, it is somewhere visible by our eyes, by when the light intensity reduces, we have uh, noticed uh, in day to day's life, we notice that. So that gives, a, gives us an idea that there is a dip in voltage. Okay, fine. And it causes the contactors to drop out. Also, it disrupts the sensitive equipment. Then the situation it may, is made worse, you know, by an externally poor starting displacement factor. So usually that factor will be in the range of 15 to 30%. The time required, which is an, uh, for the motor to come back to its original speed, it depends on motor to motor, fine. So here what we are talking, telling all about is the time required for the motor to accelerate to rated speed increases with the magnitude of sag. So it's not only uh, the based on the rating of the motor, plus it also depends on the uh, the intensity of the sag and the duration of the sag that also plays a role. And excessive sag may prevent the motor even from starting successfully. So if the sag is too deep, then you know there's a dip in the voltage is too high. Then in that case, uh, the motor may, may even start to uh, fail to start. Fine. So keeping all those things in mind, we say that the sag, sag persists for uh, many seconds, and the motor should be designed in such a way that it should be able to withstand this dip in the voltage, right? So what are the methods? Uh, what are the methods by which we can control this dip in voltage? Fine, so there will, that, that is depend on different uh, uh, methods which we are going to implement in the next slides. So basically what we see is as soon as your motor starts with the full voltage, then the voltage is steep, as you can see, it suddenly falls down to, a very low voltage, somewhere around 82 or 83. So the minimum dip in the voltage, which the motor usually feels, you can see it goes around 80.55. So it's very clearly written over here. You can see in this section, let me take the pointer. So you can see the minimum voltage a motor can, you know, just see the dip as soon as you start with the nominal voltage is 80.55. Uh, dip in the voltage, percentage dip in the voltage. Find that it takes some time and it gradually increases. And then it takes some time to come to a stable point that is at one for you. So you can just check that it shows over here. It takes a duration around 2.8 second. Minimum voltage, which has been observed is 80.55%. Average voltage 
which has been seen is 88.13. As I told, it depends on the type of the SAGS, duration of SAG, as well as the type of the motor. And the maximum it has noticed to go up to, it's, it, it can just go up to, it's, it's just, uh, it just goes high and fall down. So you can see the maximum voltage, which is also observed somewhere around 1 or 2.5. Fine, so that is how the uh, behavior of the motor as soon as you start it on full load voltage. Fine, so what are the different starting methods? So what are these starting methods? These starting methods are used basically to control this starting inrush of current, right? So how in this particular lecture, we are going to basically talk about three different methods. That is resistance and reactance method, then your part winding method and star delta method. So basically these are the three methods which we are going to cover over here. Fine, so what does it say? The energizing the motor in a single step provides low cost and allows the most rapid acceleration. So you have, when we talk about a single step because there are a lot of methods which involves two step, three step and so on. So what we are telling, if you are able to energize a motor in a single step, that is your full voltage starting. Single step means I'm talking about a full voltage, you know. If you are able to control or you are able to energize your motor with the first starting itself, it's the first step itself, your cost can come down, you know. So you are able to get back your motor's normal operating condition with a one step procedure only. It is preferred method. It is a preferred method unless the resulting voltage or mechanical stress is excessive. So we are talking about a very nominal sag. And for nominal sag only, we are talking about uh, for one step. So if your sag is very severe, then your system or your motor may not get energized in single step. Then you may have to go for two, three steps. Fine. So to control your inrush current. Then what happened? Auto transformer starters are also there. So they have two tra auto transformers connected in open delta. Tap provides motor voltages. So you have another option which will provide a uh, tapping. And this tapping will be in the order of 80%, 65% or 50% of the system voltage during startup. So you can provide this. So you can, the one thing we have talked about auto transformer starters where you use two auto transformers which are connected in open delta. Right? When you're talking about two auto transformers, that evidently they have to be open because your transformers are single winding. Right? So when you talk about two transformers, auto transformers, so they are connected in open data. That is the one way of doing it. Another, you're talking about provided tapping. You provide the tapping over there as an 80%, 65%, and 50% of system voltage during startup so that you can gradually increase. You know? So line current and starting torque usually vary with the square of the voltage applied to the motor, right? That is, we have studied a lot of equations where we see that the uh, voltage, uh, square of the voltage, because the line current and starting torque both will increase the square of the voltage. So if your voltage is 230 volt, for an example, then the whatever the current supposed to flow, that will be square times of your uh, proportion to your line voltage, right? So therefore, what happens in that case, 50% tap will deliver only 25% of full load starting current, fine? Or torque, both. So I can say, because I, I'm talking about both gets increased the square times of the input voltage. So if I am doing my input setting as 50%, that means it is going to deliver only the 25% of your starting current or the starting torque. Fine. So the lowest tap which will supply the required starting torque is selected. So what we will, we will always select the lowest tap and then we start the procedure. Now to come up with the first method of resistance and reactance starters. So, you know, we are just in, because the, you have to limit the current. The basic motor is to limit the current. So if you have to limit the current, you have to insert a resistor into your circuit. So resistor will control the flow of current. So there is not only a resistor, there is also a reactance. Now the question comes, when I have a resistor which is already, which is capable of controlling the current, then why do I re uh, require a reactance? So reactance starters has certain advantages, advantage which resistance doesn't have. So what is that? We would see in reactance starter. Right. So the resistance and reactance starters initially insert an impedance in series with the motor so that the 
in rush current can be controlled fine so after a time delay after certain time when your motor pick up its normal speed the uh, inserted resistance or reactor will be automatically cut out of the uh, motor system fine so the starting resistors may be shorted out for uh, over several steps you know you go for a, you have seen that the re resistors may have a studs you know at one shot you are not applying the full resistor into your circuit so you are going in an order so you are increasing the resistor value in an order or you can say you can starting you are giving it's not that you are increasing basically actually you are decreasing in the beginning you are applying a full resistor to your circuit then slowly slowly as motor pick up the speed and able to control the rated current you can see that the resistor will slowly slowly cut out it is not going to cut out at a stretch it is going to cut out in several steps fine and the starting reactors are shorted out in a single step. So reactors are shorted out in a single steps, but the resistors are shorted out in multiple steps. Fine, so the line currents and the starting torque vary directly with the voltage applied to the motor, which we have already discussed it. So for a given starting voltage, these starters draw more current from the line than with auto transformer starters right this is a point to be noted so instead of auto transformer starters this kind of resistance or reactors current starters are going going to draw more current from the line compared to your auto transformer starters but what is the advantage i get over here this particular starters will provide me high torque right Next, what we see that reactors are typically, yeah, so when I come into a reactor starters, they typically provide with me 50, 45, 37.5% tappings. So with this tap, taps, you can vary your, uh, you know, you can control your inrush uh, current at the beginning. Fine. So now there are two uh, circuits, uh, which is displaying on the screen. And these both the circuits I have taken from the website, I have written it very clearly down. Fine. So these circuits are basically talking about this is your resistance starter and this is your reactant starter. So what happens in this kind of starter? So you can see your motor. Fine. And you have resistance are connected in series. Whatever you see M, uh, whatever you see which look like to you like capacitor, they are not capacitor, they are contactors. Fine. So why the name M is given over here? This M is, this is a contactor for the main. So this is your main contactor. And this R contactor is nothing but it is a contactor for your resistances, which are connected in series with your motor and with the line. Fine. So these are the, this, this is a setup uh, of a starter and you can see there is a stop button and the start button. So here, uh, how the operation is exactly taking place is when you push the start button, the, all the M contactors, the main contactors, M stands for main here, all the M contactors gets energized. So once they get energized, what will happen? Once they get energized, what will happen? Your line will be directly connected, your resistance, all the resistance which you have taken will directly connected in series with the line and the motor. Fine. So with this energizing of M, what will happen? You can see all our main contactors. So once you push the start button, wherever you can see the M is written, all will get energized and they will close the circuit such that this resistance comes in series with your motors, motor. Fine. So this energized of M will also initiate your timer. TR stands for timer. So this M, uh, this M also energize your timer and timer will start counting. So at the end of the timer, what will happen? At the end of the timer, this will close. This switch you are seeing at the end of the timer, this will close and this R, all the R's you are seeing getting energized. The R will get energized and what will happen? The, once the R will get energized, which are connected parallel to your uh, series resistors, will shunt them out of the line. Fine. So which what does it mean? That means basically I am cutting out the resistors out of the motor circuit. Fine. So that's how the uh, uh, resistors are connected in series with the motors during the starting. And that's how your 
uh, starter is a uh, resistor starter is working and with the same principle even the reactor starter also will work as you can see there's absolutely no difference in your circuit diagram but only difference is instead of resistor we have used a reactor over here okay otherwise the operation remains same so i if uh, just to just brush up what are these uh, reactors are resistors are doing it or how does the starter works so what I have already told you, how does it work? But let us just go one by one. What does it do? Resistor starting is accomplished by connecting resistors in series with the motor during the starting period. When the start button is pressed, all the M's contactors present in your starter will get energized. Fine, so energizing means they will close basically all the M contacts. Wherever the M contacts are there, all gets closed. So the 3M load contacts connect the motor and the resistors to the line. Since the resistors are connected in series with the motor, they limit amount of inrush current flowing into the circuit. So once you are able to control that, so you can also see that you are able to control the dip in the voltage. Fine. So when the auxiliary contact, which is in series with your timer, gets energized, what happens, it closes the timer and the timer starts uh, counting the sequence. And at the end of this time period, I've shown you the contacted R, the switch was, which was open, it gets closed and that energizes the contact R. So once your contact R getting energized, which are also connected in parallel with your resistors, resistors which are connected in series with your motor, will also get you know what, you, they are able to shunt out those resistors from your main lines, fine. So with this, you can see that, uh, how do we do that? Now I can have this control system, many control systems which are able to sense the speed. So as per the sense, as, uh, as per sensing the speed, they're able to control that, you know, now I, they can easily cut out these uh, resistors from the system. So what we say, we fix a time delay over there. So time delay is one of the most popular methods to determine when to connect the motor directly to the power line because it is, sim it is simple and inexpensive. So, but it is not the only method. So I am going to put a time delay and time delay is just going, which we were talking about the timer. You know, we have, we have just put a time delay or timer after a certain time, the switch of uh, the uh, TR will get closed and R will get activated. I mean, that is one of the method, but that is not the only method. So what, what is another method is there apart from using the, you know, time delay that is called speed sensor. You put a speed sensor over there. So some control circuit sense motor speed to determine when to shunt the resistors out of the power line. So I'm using one method as a time delay, second method uh, we are using as a, you know, to sense the speed. So once you sense the speed, the speed has come to a normal rated value. The our resistors, uh, the contacts which are connected in parallel with your resistors get automatically shunted the resistors out of the main line. So what happened in the illustration, permanent magnets are attached to the motor shaft and a Hall effect sensor determines the motor speed. So when the motor speed reaches a predetermined level, contactor R energizes and shunt the resistors out of the line. So that is what the whole logic, how this starters works. So either I use a logic of time delay or I use a logic of uh, speed sensor, right? So there are two ways of finding it out. Reactor starting. So if you remember just a few seconds back, I have told you about uh, when there is a resistor starting, you know, that when, when there's a concept of resistor starting is present or the starter is present, then what is the need of this reactor starting? Fine. So the advantage of reactor starting is in case of a resistor starting, what happened? The current will just uh, shoot up uh, very fast. Whereas in case of a reactor, you know, it is an inductive. So there is an exponential increase in current. So you it will, in this case, your current is not going to shoot up with a few seconds, you know. So what happens, a reactor start is the same basic concept, except that reactors or choke coils are used to limit in rush current instead of resistors, which we have already discussed. So these reactors limits in rush current with inductive reactants instead of resistance and reactors have an advantage. What is that advantage? That in current limiting circuits, 
because of the rise time of current in an inductive load so in your inductive load because what what is the you know what is basic definition it opposes the rate of flow of current you know so it will it will not allow to change the current uh, abruptly it has to it will take some time it has an exponential form of you know when you see that is an exponential rate which in which it, the current gets changed so therefore in a resistive circuit the current will reach its full value with the help of your ohms uh, law value instantly in an inductive circuit the current must rise at an exponential rate which we see in this particular figure so this figure clearly explains that how the resistive current is increasing and how the inductive current is increasing you know so that that is where you get the benefit of inductive starters so this exponential rise time of current further reduces the inrush current so they will not allow immediately to uh, you know the the it it, it or i can say it will it's very good in limiting the inrush current much better than your resistive starters now next coming to a part winding starter this particular starters uh, it's very new uh, it's not new for new technology i'm talking about new for majority of the students because you know these kind of starters are used for for part winding motors so what do i mean by part winding motors motors which are having dual rating you know, usually we see motor with a single rating so this kind of motors will have a dual rating and their stators are going to have two windings fine so that is a unique uh, type of a special application motors so such kind of motors since the motors names are as your part winding motors so the starters which are used to control the inrush current of such motors are also given name as part winding starters you know so that, that's what it says the part winding starters are attractive for the use of dual rated motors so you have the two ratings your motors can run for 20 volt as well as for 440 volt uh, or 230 or 460 volt uh, motors fine so the stator of the dual rotor has a two windings it can be connected the two windings can be connected in parallel or in series so when you want to go for a lower voltage connect them in parallel when you wanted to use them for a higher voltage connect them in series fine so the part winding motors are used to drive where do you uh, where what is the application of part driving motors so usually you use for them the centrifugal loads so what are these centrifugal loads that's your fan that is your blowers or pumps fine they are also used for other loads we also use them in the air conditioning system you know so they are also used for other loads where a reducing starting torque is necessary so you want uh, to start these with a reduced torque fine so that is the major function uh, where we use such kind of motors so part winding uh, starters somewhat look like this so the concept as when you look into the figure you can make out the concept is very simple nothing you can see the below part is as same as your your previous section which you have seen the resistance and reactant starter so below section is same here only it is a sim very simple logic i'm just using a direct contactors all these are contactors so this is your first winding contactors this is your second winding contactors so if this part winding contactors are of single step you know so then operated with the part winding contactor stated for a lower voltage rating so that means i am going for a lower voltage rating means my windings are connected in parallel as you can see in the figure so you can see this both this is having two winding so these two windings are connected in parallel so if they are connected in parallel which means i'm using it for low voltage applications fine so now in this in such cases in uh, low voltage application cases what happens you energize only one wind fine so only one winding is energized initially limiting the starting current and starting torque to 50% of the value seen when both the windings are energized simultaneously so 50% or because you are having only two uh, windings so if you energize only one by winding that means you are able to provide only 50% of your whole starting current or torque fine so if it is uh, for a lower voltage then we go only for one by by winding energization fine so for a two step part winding obviously we go for both the windings energization but two winding have certain advantages and uh, uh, two winding starters, two-step uh, part winding starters have certain advantages 
So whatever uh, it is, uh, what are these advantages are? These advantages are it is less expensive. Fine. Most other starting uh, methods require additional voltage reducing elements such as transformers, resistors, or reactors. But you, as you have seen in the beginning, I told you that the circuit is very simple. You don't have any extra transformers or your resistors or reactors. You just have a contactors in all the three lines. Fine. So these contactors will help you to close the circuit or open the circuit. So once this motors gets energized and the motor and the contactors, uh, you know, and, and once they are um, coming to a rated speed automatically, it will just gets open and the motor starts running. Because that is the reason only one motor, because these are used for very low applications and uh, lower voltage applications. And hence you need only a very less torque. Right? It uses only half size of the contactors. It provides close transition starting that's what i what, what that's what i do it requires a very less starting torque so what are the disadvantage of such uh, motors the fixed starting torque is poor you know if, if you are talking about the starting torque i may be provide able to provide you a less starting torque but it is quite poor the starting is almost always an incremental start device you know it is unsuitable for long starting or high inertia load so when you are talking about that See, when your load is small, it's good. That is what I'm taking. I'm talking about a low voltage application. So when you go for a very high voltage application, then this particular phenomena will not work. And for high voltage applications, you cannot connect your windings in parallel. You have to go for a series connection winding. Right? So these type of startings has many applications in the air conditioning systems. This is due to the increased capacity built into the systems and the necessity of limiting both the current and torque in starting. You want to limit your inrush current as well as you don't want to provide a very high torque. Fine. So that is the reason why you use such kind of starters. And the start delta starter. So start delta starter, most of you are aware about it, but just let us see. So star delta starter, as the name says, uh, just go uh, as per the name, that means your motor is going to first connect it in star, and then once it becomes its uh, nominal speed, it's going to connect in delta. Why it has to be connected in first star? All of you know the reason, because in delta, your phase voltage is equal to line voltage, fine? But in case of a star, your phase voltage is, uh, line voltage divided by root three, or in other words, your line voltage is root three times of your phase voltage. So you have that option of one by root three, you know, or you say that one third of your current gets reduced, fine. So this is what the benefit you get whenever you connect your motors first in star connection, and then transform into a delta connection once it uh, pick up a nominal speed. Fine. So it says the start delta starters connect the stator in star for starting, and then after a time delay, it will uh, reconnect into a delta connection. The star connection reduces the starting voltage to 57%. One by root three will give you 57.7% of the system line to line voltage. Fine. Then starting current and starting torque are reduced by 33% of their values full voltage start. So we uh, when you, you have your first thing is the voltage is getting reduced by 57 percent and the current and torque reduced by 33 percent so you know so we have uh, done a mathematical solution of this in your you would have studied in your BE first year how does it do so fine so here we are not going into the mathematical calculation wow here it's very simple to find out and here what we are more about how does this starter works so you can see in your figure, there is a main contactor MC1, is your delta contactor MC2 and the star contactor ST1. So what here we are doing it, you, there's a main circuit breaker. So main circuit is breaker is nothing but it is going to uh, you know, connect the main switch to the primary of your winding. This is your three phase motor, primary of your motor, fine. So it does so with the help of a main contactor MC1. So in initial operating condition, what will happen? Your MC1 and this ST1, that is your star connector, okay? So your main contactor and the star contactor will be in closed condition, okay? Both will be in closed mode. 
so that the machine is able to limit the inrush current as well as the torque fine so what will happen once the machine once the motor picks up its normal speed this will be automatically gets disconnected and the it will be automatically transferred to delta contactor and how it does so it does so with an help of inbuilt timer in the starter there will be an inbuilt timer which will uh, look into that is what the concept is of time delay same thing here also you can put as a time delay or speed delay observe any one of the thing and then you just convert from start to delta so the main circuit breaker serves as the main power supply switch that supplies to the electric power circuit i told you the main contactor connects the reference source voltage ryb to the primary of the motor in the operation main contactor and the start contactor are closed initially and then after a period of time the start contactor is opened and the delta contactor is closed the control of contactor is by the timer in built into the starters the star and delta are electrically interlocked they are electrically interlocked as well as in many places mechanically also they are interlocked so the star contactor serves to initially short the secondary terminal of what what is the, what does the star contactor does your star connection you are shorting the points fine so it is basically shorting the secondary terminal of the u2 v2 and w2 for the start sequence during the initial run of the motor from standstill this provides the one third of your direct online current dol is nothing but direct online current to the motor so you are almost able to reduce the one third of the current and which reduces the high inrush current with large capacity motors controlling the interchanging star connection and delta connection of ac induction motor is achieved by means of star delta or y delta control circuit so you have a specifically as i told you there will be a timer in the starter and there is a separate control circuit which is able to take care of when it to convert to start to delta fine the control circuit consists of push button switches auxiliary contacts and timer so definitely this will also just like uh, other uh, starters this will also have push button switch auxiliary contacts as well as your timer now coming to uh, the last segment of our today's lecture that is estimating the sac severity during full voltage uh, starting okay so how do we read that uh, really this kind of voltage dip is going to cause a problem fine so what uh, especially for the motors you know so what we do is so starting an induction motor results in a very deep in very dip uh, very steep dip in the voltage okay so which we have already seen in my previous slides i have shown you that how the uh, voltage falls to almost 80% fine so immediately you see a steep dip uh, in the voltage and then it gradually increases and comes to the normal fine so if full voltage starting is used the sag voltage in per unit of nominal system voltage can be calculated by this particular voltage so this is the minimum voltage you know which will help you to understand yes the motor So this is if the full voltage starting you are using a full voltage for your starting okay the sag voltage in per unit so you are basically calculating the sag voltage of the per unit which this motor can be able to handle fine so that is your v minimum per unit is nothing but v per unit into kva at short circuit kva locked rotor plus the kva of short circuit of the motor fine so where vpu actually system voltage in per unit of the nominal motor lock rotor kva and system short circuit kva of the motor so so motor lock rotor kva you are talking about you are talking about the short circuit terminology that is the sizing of the motor basically you are talking about when it short circuited or when it is a locked rotor uh, position fine so that will help you to understand what help you to calculate what is the minimum voltage you know which is acceptable for the motor to uh, run so there is a simple one graph is there which will help you to understand the size of the transformer for a full voltage starting uh, sag of 90% so what basically this graph illustrates this illustrates that the 90% of the sag with the competition of 90% of the sag of your nominal voltage it uh, with the help of typical impedance and motor characteristics so if you see your x axis and y axis x axis it basically talks about the sizing 
how the sizing of your transformer KVA and the sizing of the motor in terms of transformer works out, you know. So this will basically help you to understand the sizing of your motor as well as transformer by taking the 90% dip in your voltage. So if the result is above that minimum allowable steady state voltage, that means V minimum per unit, which you have calculated. So what we have calculated V minimum per unit, that is your V per unit, that is your nominal voltage multiplied by KVA of short circuit divided by KVA of locked rotor plus KVA of short circuit of the motor. So these KVA rating are nothing but these are the rating of the motors which we are talking about. So that only will help you to understand what is the minimum voltage which under a steady state uh, condition, uh, which is allowable for, you know, without affecting your equipment, right? So if not, then the SAG magnitude versus duration characteristics you need to read out. You know, they are SAG, what is the percentage of the dip in the voltage? How long it is going to stay back? So that particular curve you have to read out and you have to just see whether you have to, whether your equipment is going to tolerate or tolerate this dip in the voltage or not, fine? So what does it, this line says, if not, then the SAG magnitude, if your this is not allowable, this minimum dip in the voltage, if it's not allowable or the equipment is not able to, you know, um, uh, it's not able to accept, then what is that, uh, the next thing you have to do it, you just have to look for your uh, SAG magnitude versus duration characteristics, okay, which need to be compared to the voltage tolerance envelope of the affected equipment, your equipment definitely have a certain voltage tolerance limit. So you have to look at that limit and look at your voltage duration, voltage SAG versus duration characteristics or curve where you can see whether your, your, this particular equipment is able to withstand uh, this type of dip in sack or not. Fine, so the required calculations are fairly complicated. Fine, it's not so easy. The way we have put one, one just one uh, formula which talks about a V minimum per unit, but it's actually not so uh, easy. And best left to a motor starting or general transient analysis computer programming. So there are a lot of other things back end work uh, you know, where the things has to be really analyzed. There will be small, small uh, factors related to or the small, small elements which are uh, parameters which are related to the increase in current or the torque or controlling of voltage. We need to study those, uh, um, you know, very deeply and understand exactly what is wrong in the system. Now, what are the data required for the simulation? When I'm talking about that, if there is a uh, you, know, you know, the simple formula is not going to work out. You need to do some computer program, which will help you to uh, just find out whether this particular motor rating is going to fit into my voltage side duration characteristics or not. So for that, there will be some uh, program written. And for that simulation part, certain data are required. So what are these data which you need? This is the following data will be required for the simulations are that is your parameters as, as exactly that's what I told you there are many other parameters which affect this particular condition. So the parameters values for the standard induction motor equivalent circuits are resistance reactance of your primary secondary okay and then your uh, your auxiliary everything all comes into picture. Fine, so then number of, whether I'm talking about the resistance reactance of my primary winding and secondary winding, or I'm talking about the reactance of the whole motor body, fine, so they all plays a role. So I need to know all these small, small parameters data. Number of poles and the speed. So what is important for any induction motor? How many pole motor it is and what is the rated RPM you have maintained? Inertia constant, next is your inertia constant values for motor and motor load. Very important, you require the mass, you require the inertia. These are all important uh, you know, parameters which need to be uh, account on. So torque versus, yes, very important for any induction motor, you need to know the spot, torque versus speed characteristics. You know That will help you understand exactly why the motor is not able to pick up its nominal speed because as I've told you in the very beginning slides, you know, if the voltage sag is very severe, many motors uh, like 
they just fail to start. You know, their starting will not be very smooth if the sag is very deep or duration is more. So therefore, the talk speed characteristics is very important for such kind of motors. Fine, so now the quiz time. So what is the first question? Let us see. Full voltage starting of induction motor may cause. What, my dear friends, what is the answer? Full voltage starting of induction motor. You are applying a full voltage to your induction motor. What will happen? What is the first thing you notice? Fine. You notice there is a, don't give it because interest of current's logic comes later. The first thing which we say there is a dip in voltage. Fine. So there will be immediately things whenever you turn on your motors in your house also you would have noticed whenever you are for pumping your water you just turn your, your motor you can just see for a second uh, the blink of your tube lights or the basically it will be observed in your tube lights on you or any lamp which you have at your house fine so there will be a dim the voltage the will, will reduced due to the reduction of voltage the intensity of the light will reduce while using stator resistance starter with three phase induction motor the resistance of the starters are kept at what should be the resistance i am talking about here resistance starter so initially my starter should be in the resistance starter should be at a zero point or should be at at maximum point fine very clearly i told you resistors will cut out in steps so my this hint is enough to give you an answer because i've used the word cut out Okay, so that means the resistor should be kept at the maximum point. Okay, the resistor should be kept at maximum point. What advantage does a reactor have when limiting inrush current that is not available with a resistor? That also I have explained to you. When I have a resistor starter, why do I need a reactant starter? I have explained to you that. What is that answer? Yes, I hope if those who are listening to the lecture, they are already uh, know the answer. And that is what? That is the rise time of your current. There what happens? The rise time of current is very instantly, whereas in your inductor starters, what will happen or reactor starter, what will happen? It is, it is rising in exponential rate. So the answer is rise time of current. Part time, part winding, starters are attractive for use with okay so where do you apply this part winding starters okay for part winding motors and how this part winding motors look like they are nothing but dual motors fine so they have dual ratings so that's why they are called dual rated motors so part winding starters are not suitable for use with dash dual voltage motors fine this i have not discussed but i have still asked so keep this in mind that part winding starters are not suitable for use with you know delta wound if your windings are connected you know delta wound dual voltage motors it is not suitable because you know you have only two windings over there windings of star delta starter while starting and during running are connected in yes windings of star delta starter while starting and during running are connected in what yes as the name says that it will be first connected in star and then it will be connected in delta fine so the answer is first it will be connected in star and next it will be connected in delta the advantages of star delta starter over other types of starter is yes what is the advantages you see in star delta starter they are cheapest of all and they are almost maintenance free okay so with this i finish today's lecture and i hope all of you have enjoyed and remember a few of the major points uh, which will help you to understand the further lectures. Thank you. Have a nice day.